Hello, welcome to this video. Right, in this video, we're going to take a look at provisioning a K3S cluster with external HCD. A few of you asked me to do a video on K3S but use an external HCD, right? So I've done a video on K3S branches, K3S lightweight Kubernetes distribution. So if I search in YouTube for just me, K3S, this video here, Cube 80.1 Rancher K3. Yeah, so that's the video that I did. Basically what I did was I used the provisioning script following the Rancher's documentation to bring up a single master and a single worker node. So Rancher's K3 is if you are setting up a standalone single master node cluster, it's going to use embedded SQLite as the data store. But if you are setting up in a highly available fashion, you have an option to use an external HCD as an external data store, or you could even use MySQL or PostgreSQL as as an external data store. So a few of you asked me to do a video on using either MySQL or Postgres as an external data store for this K3S cluster. That's coming up in the next video but for this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up an external HCD cluster as the external data store for the K3S cluster. I'm not going to be setting up a highly available K3S cluster. Again it's going to be a very simple single master node cluster but instead of using the embedded SQLite we're going to be using an external HCD cluster. And I've I've already done a video on external HCD cluster. That's the video that came out last week. If I search for just me external HCD, external HCD part one, no, not that one. HCD cluster Hatch ATLS, that's the one released six days ago. Yeah, Cube 104. So I would highly recommend you to watch this video because I'm going to continue from this video. I've done all the prep work for this and I've done every single step that I've mentioned in this video and I've got to work in external HCD cluster that's simple, secure and highly available with all the TLS certificates and everything. So that's going to be the base for this video. So I've got this external HCD cluster and I'm going to follow the usual K3S documentation to set up a single node cluster. I actually I'm not going to bother setting up a worker node. I just want to show you how what's the configuration that you need to be doing in order to use an external HCD as your data store. Okay, so let me open up Rancher K3S Rancher K3S documentation installation installation options okay so basically we've got two options for installing or provisioning a K3S cluster. So one is the scripted approach where you download a script from the internet from a rancher k3s website and then run it on your machine right i would advise you to be very careful when you're running some command of this sort because you don't know what's in the script so make sure to download the script have a look at line by line and see what it's exactly doing only if you understand it completely then go for this script the other approach is to download the k3s binary from the github release page and then use K3S server or K3S agent depending on what you are setting up and there are a bunch of options for either of those. All right, so I'm gonna stick with the scripted approach for this video because that's the one uh, that I followed in cube 80.1 in the Rancher K3S video. So let me use the same set of steps. So if I show you my virtual machines. So I've got three virtual machines. All of them are configured to run HCD. So it's basically the same as the uh, the video that I did last week to set up an external HCD cluster, it's all set up. And if you look in the current directory, and I've got all the certificates, the CA certificate, the HCD private key, and the HCD certificate. If you watched my previous video, then you would know about all these certificates and things. So this is exactly the same setup that I had in my previous video. I've got to work in external HCD cluster, and I've already exported Required variables, HCD CTL API, HCD CTL endpoint. So that's the three virtual machines running in libvirt KVM. And I've exported the CS cert, HCD certificate and key. And now I can run HCD CTL member list, HCD CTL endpoint status and all sort of things. So what I'm trying to say is I've got to work in external HCD cluster and let's provision uh, virtual machines for our K3S cluster. All right, for that, I'm going to git clone my Vagrant repository. I'll link this GitHub repo in the video description. So if I go into Vagrant and then to Vagrant files, I have Ubuntu 20, CD to Ubuntu 20, and I've 
have my vagrant file and bootstrap let's take a look at the vagrant file right so node counters to basically i want to bring up two virtual machines it's going to be named ubuntu vm1 and ubuntu vm2 they are generic ubuntu 2004 vagrant box and i'm setting up private network 172 16 16 101 and 102 and you could either use virtual box or libvirt as the provider i've got both in the vagrant file if you're using uh, uh, Windows or Mac, you could go with the default virtual box. If you just do Vagrant app, it's going to be using the virtual box provider. And but I'm used to be using uh, Libvirt as my provider, so I will be typing Vagrant app minus minus provider Libvirt because that's quite quicker. And I'm running on a Linux host, so I prefer Libvirt to virtual box. And in both cases, we have one gig memory and one CPU assigned to these two virtual machines. So for this demo, I'm going to change the node count to one because I'm not going to be setting up a work node it's the same process you can follow in cube 80.1 this configuration that I'm doing is just for the master node that's slightly different because instead of using external sorry embedded SQL light I'm going to show you what options you need to be using to use an external HCD cluster so the only difference is when you are setting up a master node otherwise everything is going to be the same so I'm going to leave it with you guys to watch cube 80.1 where I've shown how to set up or how to add an agent once you've got a k3s cluster all right so i've changed the node count to one and if i show the bootstrap shell script i'm enabling password authentication in this ubuntu box which is disabled by default and i'm setting up the root password to be admin that's all i'm doing and if i do vagrant up minus minus provider libert it's going to bring up that one virtual machine for me all right so the virtual machine should be up and running if i do a virtual list yes we've got the three hcd nodes and one ubuntu 20. right let's go back to the documentation first i think i need to set up the command that i need to be running on my machine all right so first let me ssh to 101 the password is the root password is admin so i'm root user inside the one virtual machine that i provisioned just now all right let's go back to the documentation and i'm going to be running this command not as it is i need to make some adjustments right i'm going to open up a text editor and paste it here the thing i'm going to do is what basically the script does is it downloads the k3s binary and it sets it up as a server or an agent depending on where you run it okay and if you scroll further down the options for installation from the binary basically you download k3s from the release github releases page that's what the script is going to do it's going to download k3s and does the provisioning step and if you want to pass some arguments to this command registration options for the k3s server okay so if i'm if i open that in a new tab scroll down to k3s server cli help you can see here it's k3s server and you've got a long list of options that you can pass okay so you can pass this option by running k3s server and all the list of options here but i'm not doing this installation from the binary method i'm doing the scripted method so for that there is an option you can set an environment variable install underscore k3s underscore exec and the value that that you pass into this environment variable will be passed to the k3s binary behind the scene so let's copy that go back to the text editor and paste it okay so we're downloading the script and before executing it we are setting up certain environment variables which will then pass to the underlying k3s binary before it runs the k3s server command okay to keep it simple i'm going to break it down into multiple lines let's do it this way okay the first thing i'm going to add to the k3s command is if i show the list of options here i'm interested in two options the first one is node ip and the second one is flannel interface the reason i want to use these two options is if i show ip address show command on my virtual machine you can see i've got two network interfaces eth0 so that's the default network that was created when i did the vagrant up command and this eth1 command in my vagrant file i'm using a private network i want to be using this private network for all the traffic for kubernetes and for our host to host communication and everything so if you don't 
pass in the minus minus flannel interface network the flannel is the overlay network we're not overriding the overlay network the default overlay network for k3s is flannel and when flannel is deployed by k3s it's going to pick the first available interface eth0 in my case eth0 won't work i want to be using eth1 so that's the reason i'm passing in minus minus flannel interface so if i copy that and go to the text editor paste it here equals eth1 so i'm specifically saying eth1 specifically setting this option so that flannel uses eth1 for the network traffic right and the second thing i'm going to do is minus minus node ip copy and paste it here equals 172.16.16.101 otherwise again any traffic k3s cube admin or anything will be using this ip address et zero one ip address so i'm specifically saying i want to be using this ip address and this network interface for all the traffic forget about et zero okay so that's the option that i'm passing in to the k3s right so if i just run this command now it's going to set up a simple single master node k3s cluster again it's going to be using embedded SQLite. So now comes the configuration option that you need to think about if you want to use an external HCD cluster, right? So we have an external HCD cluster, we have all the certificates and everything. Now we need to configure, we need to pass in certain options to let the K3S binary know where our external data store is, right? So let's go back to the documentation. And if I look at clusters, data store options right so these are the things that we need to be passing external data store configuration parameters so minus minus data store endpoint minus minus data store ca file the certificate file the key file so basically what you need to do is you can pass in all the options you can copy that and in here you paste it and then blah 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 you type in the, the data store endpoint come back here you pass in the ca file ca file equals your ca cert dot pm whatever it is and it's going to become very lengthy one so instead what i'm going to do is instead of passing this as an option to install k3s exec environment variable you can actually pass this as an environment variable itself instead of passing this as an argument to install k3s exec okay so the equivalent environment variable for data store endpoint is k3s data store endpoint so let's copy that paste it here so let's come back to the value a little later and then we need the data stores ca file so let's copy paste it and then we need the k3s data store certificate file copy paste and finally we need the private key file copy paste all right so that's all we need so now we need to find the right value to pass into all these four environment variables so that's the data store endpoint so that's the hcd endpoint and that's the hcd's ca certificate file and then the certificate file and the key file okay so what's the format for the data store endpoint if i scroll further down here the data store endpoint format is like this so forget about postgres forget about mysql because we are not doing that that will be in the next video so if you look in the hcd basically you are using this option here this is the format that you will be using and for the certificate key file and everything you just pass in the the path to the uh, certificate and the key now in mind i have if i cd to play directly i have all my certificates here the certificate that we need is the ca certificate which is this one ca.pem and the hcd private key this one and the hcd certificate so these three files we need to be copying it to this ubuntu vm1 the uh the k3s master node okay let's do that right now right sap ca.pem hcd private key and hcd certificate root at 101 which is this machine the password is admin right let me close that and here if i do an ls we've got all these three files here so i'm going to make a directory called atc hcd pki right let's move everything 
star.pem to etc etcd pki so we know that we've got all the certificates stored under etc etcd pki it doesn't have to be etc etcd pki you can store it anywhere all right so we have all these things stored there and what about the endpoint so let's copy the endpoint actually i have this endpoint already set here so if i run export yeah i have it here so this is the endpoint so it's basically https the ip address of all my 38cd nodes on port 2379 let's copy that and paste it here okay so that's the data store endpoint that's fine k3s data store ca file which is etc etcd pki so that's the directory we copied our ca file to so if i look at etc etcd pki right so ca.pem that's the ca certificate ca.pem Again, etc etcd pki so cert file is etcd.pem paste that and let's copy this one so now the private key etcd key file is etcd key.pem copy paste so i think that's all we need so we have the curl command that downloads the script and we set an environment variable k3 as exec and pass in the flannel interface and the node ip that's fine and we pass in these four extra environment variables to configure to specify the external data store that we want to use in our case it's an external hcd cluster 221 222 223 we are passing in the certificate of the ca the certificate file for hcd and the private key file for the hcd and we're uh, running that script okay let's copy that back in here let's run it i think that should work so before doing that if i open up another pane let me do just to show that we are actually using i need to export all the environment variables etcd ctl member list i need to be in the play directory all right etcd ctl member list we've got the three member um, etcd cluster let me show you that we don't have anything stored in this etcd data store i want to show you the state of the etcd cluster before and after running this command okay there's a command etcd ctl get slash so this is going to list all the keys so the moment you can see there are no keys in our etcd ctl uh, sorry in the etcd data store okay right let's close this and if i run this command so now it's downloading the k3s it's going to be using version 1.21.5 kubernetes installing k3s to use a local bin k3s and starting k3s okay system ctl status k3s active running let's do do we have kubectl yeah kubectl get nodes All right so ubuntu vm one one node kubectl get pods okay containers are getting created kubectl cluster info if i spell that correctly cluster info okay kubectl get pods dash a right containers are still getting created okay so now we have a single node cluster now we want to make sure that it's actually using the external etcd cluster that we configured it to use how do we verify it so there is no static etcd path and if i do ps minus af grep etcd there is no etcd process running on this machine so clearly it must be using something external we know what it is okay so etcd ctl get slash so i'm just listing everything under the root and i'm just listing just the keys okay uh, i need to be in the play directory because that's where i'm exporting all the certificate certificate and key file and in the play directory is where i've got all my certificates okay etcd ctl get slash and you can now see all these kubernetes related keys data populated in this external etcd data store i think that's it 
So we have successfully configured K3S or provisioned a K3S cluster that uses an external HCD cluster as the data store. I think that's all for this video. And in my next video, I will show you how you can use a MySQL or a Postgres, PostgreSQL database as an external data store instead of HCD. Give this a try. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to help. And I will see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.